picture of a busy executive. Finding ways to keep him working. <laughs> hey, if your father was president of a consolidated telephone company, you'd have plenty of fun, too. Now listen, loafers. Having the entire supervision of the construction department makes me anything but a playboy. Now get that straight, will you? Mr. <laughs> Dale. What is that one? Gas explosion at 6th and Market. Manhole caved in and one of the workmen trapped under a cable line. The gas explosion at 6th and Market. Send an ambulance. Get my car ready. I'm leaving immediately. I'll see you fellas later. under the main cable line. Can't you get him out? Well, there isn't a chance. Unless we cut the cable, we'll cut it. But Mr. Dale, cut it! All right, Ed, send down the line. When I give you the signal, we'll haul him up. Now, don't lose any time, boys. Have the doctor get in for his position, will you? You all right, McDonald? Yes, sir, I'm all right. Oh, fine. Better take the rest of the day off. Thank you. So you ordered the cable cut to save the workmen? Dad, there wasn't anything else to do. That man's life meant something, didn't it? The life of every employee of this company means something. But you shouldn't have cut that cable. Are you trying to tell me that you would have stood by and willfully allowed that man to die? Yes. When you stopped all communication for an hour by cutting that cable, you stopped sick people from sending for their doctors. You stopped hospitals from sending out ambulances. You left the city at the mercy of fire. Who knows how many lives were jeopardized? Who knows? That's the point. Who knows? You're acting under a supposition. Now, before me, a man was dying, and I was acting on fact. Son, this company operates because it serves all humanity, not a single individual. That service must not be stopped. Service, service, service. That's all I hear is service. What about the service due that man under the cable? He knew the chances he took when he went to work for us. He wouldn't have had you jeopardize the lives of thousands of others to save him. No, it's a lot of ridiculous stuff. Now, I saved one man's life. Order the directors is waiting, gentlemen. All right. Well, now we'll see what they have to say. Are you here, sir? Oh. What? Sorry to kept you waiting, gentlemen. We got down to business at once. The first thing that I wish to take up is a question of interrupted service this afternoon. That's right, WT. Do you know how many complaints we've had? For the first time in the history of Consolidated Telephone, we've failed to serve our subscribers. Now, just a minute. I ordered that cable cut, and I'll accept full responsibility for it. One man and thousands were in danger. I do it again to save a man's life. Why is it a question of that? My son and I have already discussed this matter fully. Yes, we have. And I want to tell you gentlemen one thing. Yes. What? what is that? It's regarding the workman who was injured in the manhole explosion, sir. Well, how is he? He's dead. There you are. You've accomplished nothing and violated every rule of this business. If it weren't for your idiotic rules, the men would have cut that cable without waiting for me to get there. They knew better. They knew better. They were afraid. Afraid of what you do to them. And the delay cost a man's life. We promised to keep this service going at all costs. I've heard all that and I'm sick of it. When the service of a company becomes more important than the lives of its employees, then I don't want any of it. You can have my resignation. Tim. Oh, I'm through. Tim. Tim, you can't walk out on this Oh, can't I? I'm finished. You just think you are, but you're not. 
You've got the same stuff in you that I had 40 years ago. It took me from live man up to the president's office. Oh, come on, boy. Let's forget what happened today. Call it all a mistake. Dad, I'm through, I tell you. I'm fed up with this whole business. You can't get away from it, son. Oh, can't I? Well, I'll show you. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe we should have been announced. Come here, Robertson. How's everything down at Riverton? Not so good, I'm afraid. Have you met my daughter, Barbara? Oh, how do you do? How do you do? Would you both sit down? I won't leave at the moment. Thanks, we will. badly hurt. Doctor here. No, I'm just the intern. Dr. Nelson's up at the Henderson Farm, about 30 miles out the state road. Well, have they a phone? Yes. What's the number? I'll phone him. Riverton 821. Well, this phone's dead. I wouldn't be surprised. The service here is terrible. Where's your telephone office? About two blocks down the street. You do what you can for him. I'll get that doctor. I've got to get a call through right away. I'm sorry, but the phones are temporarily disconnected. I know that, but how long before we're we going to get service? Mr. Matthews working on it. Where is it? Why, uh, in the maintenance room. Please. Wait a minute. What's going on here? 
He wanted to use the telephone, and when I told him the lines were out of order, it seemed to upset him. Are you Matthew? Yes. Well, how soon can I get a connection? Says to get this trouble fixed. What is your trouble? Well, the generators is off. You checked your resistance lamp? I didn't ask for any help. tampering with your resistance lamp. What's the idea? Wait a minute. Who are you? Hold on, Matthews. He seems to know what he's doing. It was disconnected, wasn't it? Hello, Mabel. Is my dad in? He's in the maintenance room, Miss Robertson. I'll send word. Never mind. I've got to put in a call. Oh, sorry. Who is he? I don't know. He got the system working in a few minutes after Matthews had been all day on the job. Telephone man? An engineer, unless I am as my guest. His face looks to me. Yes, to me, too. Well, darling, what'd you come down to see me for? I suppose you people think I'm crazy. On the contrary, very much indebted to you. My name is Robinson. I'm the head of this company. How do you do? This is my daughter. How do you do? Father says you fix things up in quick order. Oh, Matthews would have found the trouble in a little while. By the way, I noticed a lot of unsolid connections that ought to be taken care of. Yes, we've had considerable trouble of that nature, among other things. Oh, really? Yes, some of the boys seem to think the Consolidated Telephone Company is trying to run us out of the territory. Oh, why should they do that? I don't know that they are. I went up to see W.T. Dale last week. He denied it. Well, are you losing any subscribers? Yes, we are. But the dozens. Well, I can't understand that Consolidated would count as willful destruction. Old Dale is a fighter. Yes, but he's fair. You know him? Well, I... Yes, I... Well, you see, I used to work for him. Hmm, that was right. You are a telephone man. Yes. We could use a man like you in Riverton. If you care to be Matthew's assistant, why? No, uh, thanks just the same, Mr. Robinson, but I'm not looking for a job just at the moment. Well, Mr. Robinson, can I speak to you a minute? What is it, Matthews? Report from Tyler's Junction. The wires are down, then they destroy the poles. Send along a trouble car. I can't. The foreman's out on another job. Oh, we've got to get those lines up. Get another phone. I try, but there's nobody available. Get the trouble car ready. Send along a couple of linemen. I'll go myself. Yes, Please, sir. Dad. There'll be trouble. I guess I haven't forgotten how to use my hands. Mr. Robinson. Is this a private fight, or can anyone get in? It'd be a pleasure to have you join the party. Okay. Let's go. We caught you red-handed, Jackson, and you're going to jail. For what? For destruction of private property and interruption of a public utility service.
Let's get out of here. Get you into town right away, Mr. Robinson. Nothing serious. Get those lines up. That's what we came here to do. We'll get them up, all right. Take it easy. Now, boys, get that equipment out and tie off to those trees. And we can get new poles sent out to town. You ask me, you're a crazy mission up in France at your age. And I haven't had so much fun since I became president of the company. After what happened this afternoon, we want to permit our boys to carry guns. I refused that request before, Matthews. We don't want to fight. I'm only trying to find a way to protect our property from consolidated. What makes you so sure consolidated is behind all this trouble? We're hanging a wire out there. The service has community sprayed around the dam. Consolidated after the business. Well, I doubt that very much. They've got all the territory they can handle right in the city. Nevertheless, it sounds plausible. Well, I'm still not convinced. Why? Because Consolidated doesn't do business that way. Well, the Consolidated isn't back of this trouble. Who is? Why, well, you'd be lucky to know that myself. You behave yourself, Mr. Robinson. You'll be all right for a few days. Thanks, Doc. Goodbye, Mr. Robinson. I'll check with you in the morning. Well, it was a great fight while it lasted. Yes, wasn't it? By the way, you haven't told us your name yet. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Alan. Tim Allen. Now look here, Alan. Can't we induce you to change your mind and stick with us for a while? Oh. You might at least stay to dinner. Well, it's very kind of you, but I'm afraid I've got to be on my way. Goodbye. Goodbye. Remember, the job's still open if you reconsider. I'll let you know later. Well, we'll be waiting to hear from you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, you're all washed up for the telephone business, eh? <laughs> yeah, I thought you never wanted to see a cable again. Do they know your father is president of Consolidated? No, they don't know who I am. I told them my name was Alan. Let it go with that. Pete, how about going back to the city? I've had an offer to stay. You what? <laughs> I can't get over the fact that his face looks so familiar. You think you've seen him somewhere? He called himself Tim Allen, didn't he? Yes. And he was wearing polo clothes? Oh, yes. There's some polo players out of the country club. I wonder... Riverton Country Club, please. What are you up to, Bob? I'm going to find out something about that young man. But you can't. Everton Country Club? I'm trying to locate one of the visiting players there named Allen. Tim Allen. Who? We have no Tim Allen. Well, is there anyone whose first name is Tim? There was a Tim Dale here among the visitors. Tim Dale? Where could I locate him? Riverton Hotel? Thank you. I knew his face looked familiar. We saw him in Mr. Dale's office. Then Tim Dale is... It's his son. But what's he doing here? Don't you remember? He told us that he and his son had quarreled and Tim had left, swearing he never wanted to see a telephone again. That's right, so he did. That's why he doesn't want to stay. He's afraid his dad will find out and pull a fatherly, I told you so on him. Oh, we guarantee to keep his secret. We need a man that knows as much about the telephone business as he does. Dad, do you really think he'll stay? You seem to have an unusual interest in this young man. Oh, I... It was just on behalf of the company. Well, I never heard of a Dale that ran away from a fight or a woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't you fellas understand? Robertson's in trouble. He needs help. Well, that is an hour or few. That's what you think, but you're wrong. What do you mean? I mean that we're going to help him. We? Yes. Now, neither one of you fellas ever did a day's work in your life. Oh, cut it out, Tim, will you? We don't know anything about the telephone business. You're being hired for your brain. You're being hired for your muscle and the fact that I can depend on you. We can't leave Robertson and his daughter to face this thing alone, can we? Oh, his daughter! Yes. 
Oh, so that's why we're going to... Oh, no, that girl hasn't anything to do with it. She's just a nice girl. Oh, yeah, yeah we get it. <laughs> oh, now, oh, getting aside, here. whether you like it or not, you're going to work. I like that. Hello. Get me Mr. Robinson of the Riverton Telephone Company, please. Yes. There was a pause. Four lamps lighted before the shrine of the... Hello. Hello. Oh, hello. Yes, this is Tim Allen. I, uh... Would you ask your father which office he wants me to use, please? Yes. Well, just a minute. Dad, it's Tim. He wants to know which office he should use. Tell him to use mine. Yes? Oh, fine. And tell him not to worry. Goodbye. Yeah. We'll do the worrying. Yeah. Because I can't help you folks being sapped. You were born that way. But get this straight. This is strictly business. And starting tomorrow morning, we go to work for the Riverton Telephone Company. Why did you stop work on the towers at Devil's Gorge? The survey shows that's the shortest route to the dam. We would have had them up by now, but Mr. Matthews laid the crew off. Why? I thought it wise to wait a new cable. Well, it wasn't wise. It meant delay. That line's got to be up and operating by the time the dam is finished. Now you get it up. Yes, Mr. Allen. Well, what are you doing here? Hadn't you heard? Heard what? The girl that had this job went up to the city to visit her mother. Oh, she did. I thought it was nice of Dad to give her a month's vacation with pay. I think that's very nice. What are you doing here? Well, after all, you're doing us a great favor by staying, and Dad and I thought that one of us should be here with you. Hmm. You're going to learn to like things around here. I know I will. Oh, pardon me. Oh, sit down, Miss Robinson. This is my assistant, Mr. Hall. How do you do, Mr. Hall? I feel like I know you, Miss Robinson. Mr. Allen, Have you seen talk? Jack this morning? No, he probably isn't up yet, Tim. That detective work you gave him to do is sort of ruining his sleep. Well, that's too bad. Tell him to stick on the job because this fellow Matthews may need us somewhere. Matthews? Hmm. Our Mr. Allen doesn't entirely approve of your Mr. Matthews. Every delay that we've encountered so far can be traced directly to Matthews. Read this. State Commissioner's office, huh? Tim? Exactly. Now they threaten to take our charter away from us if the service is impaired any further. Tim, do you still feel sure that that consolidator isn't behind us? I certainly do. Who else could profit by it? The charter to do business in this district would be valuable to anyone. What do you mean? I mean that if the Riverton Telephone Company ever lost its charter and were issued to anyone else, all they'd have to do is wait for the San Juan Dam to be completed, and then they could unload the consolidator at a fancy price. Don't you think we ought to talk to Dad about this first? Not at the moment. Why bother him with it? Well, in the meantime, Matthews... Matthews is only doing as he's told. There's someone more important than he back of all this. I thought I told you not to come here, Matthews. I had to, Mr. Benton. It's very important. Well, don't stand there. Shut the door. Well, what is it? Alan's worried the fact somebody's trying to grab the Riverton Charter. When will that construction crew be back at Devil's Guard? Next week. Mm -hmm. Alan told... Shh. Wait a minute. And then I followed them to the office of a man named Benton. But they closed the transom over the door and all I heard was the name Devil's Gorge. Good work. I'm going to promote you. In fact, I'm going to promote both of you. We're going to Devil's Gorge. From now on, you two are going to be linemen. Hey, that's great. At last you've hit on something that I can really do. Something you can do? Why, sure. I was one of the best men in the line when I went to Princeton. Say, if I did, wasn't so modest... This is a telephone line, Sap. No, oh, I knew it was too good to be true. Now, if Matthews and Benton are ever going to try to permanently cripple us, they're going to start there. Jack, my boy, looks like our boss is going to be busy. Let's go. Who's the name? That's Miss Robinson, our real boss.
mind if I invite myself up to your house tonight? Why, of course not. I want to talk to your dad about the work of Devil's God. Oh, I'm sure dad will be very glad to see you. Thanks. I really ought to go up and see your dad. You've only been here a few minutes. You know I've been here two hours. Anyway, it seems a shame to disturb you now. Why don't you see him in the morning? I'm leaving for the gorge in the morning. But you'll be coming back to town weekends, won't you? Not on this job. Not even to see your friends? I'm taking Bob and Jack with me. You have other friends in town, haven't you? Barbara, this job at the gorge is of vital importance. If they ever try to break us, they're going to start there. And you'll be in the thick of it. Well, naturally, that goes with the job. You will be careful, won't you? You seem to be quite concerned about my safety. Oh, I was just thinking of Father. He'd be in an awful fix if anything happened to you. You're a lovely little liar. Am I? I'm going to try to come back here every Sunday. Make a report to your dad. Oh, maybe dad can run out to the gorge to see you. My young lady, you haven't any idea what kind of a country that is. That's the most desolate place in the world. Look. Here's the gorge. We're erecting towers on either side, like that. Across here, we're going to string a double cable. One of them is to carry the main power line to the city, the other will use to carry the men across. Cable isn't up yet. Slow work, Alan. But I put some additional men on this morning. Where are they? Over the other side. Do I have to slack out that first cable ready to tie off today? Let's go to the other side and take a look around. off that second reel, will you? Okay, Kim. Bob, you better come with me.
cable clear. Bob. Yeah. Go down and check the oil on that wind. Okay. You okay up there? I wasn't expecting you here today, Mr. Robinson. Couldn't keep him in the house any longer. Oh, he was in the house long enough, too long. By the way, how's this new man, Alan, doing? Well, frankly, I'm disappointed in him. He's just an ordinary telephone line. Where is Mr. Allen? Over in tower number two. They're pulling up the slack in a new cable. Let's have a look. the brake on that wind. No, no, I didn't know I'm Gersler. Well, finally made a move that's gonna land you in jail for murder. Oh, yes. Stop. Here, 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 come, come on. Here, come on. What's happening over there, Matthews? Looks like I lost the cable. Spent two weeks getting up. Oh, oh that one in the air, hey. Boys, give my hand up there. I'm sure this was an accident, Alan. These things happen. They happen when they're carefully thought out in advance. I'm sorry I didn't listen to you when you warned me last night. What are you trying to do? Make me take the rap for this? You're in it as deep as I am. Matthew's planned this whole thing himself a year ago. I didn't Thanks, Jackson. I suspected for some time he was behind this trouble. Boys, take them both down, turn them over to the sheriff. Jack, you better go along with us. With pleasure. Come on, you. You yeah. jump off. Things are moving a little too fast for me. What does Matthew to do with all this? I would have told you before, but I wasn't sure of the setup. Benton was trying to grab your charter, and they were working for it. That's a serious charge, isn't it? Yes, but with those two in jail, it won't be hard to prove. If you hadn't allowed Alan to trick you, we'd have had that charter in our hands right now. We did everything we could, Mr. Benton. Do you realize if my men hadn't bumped into you in that telephone gang, you'd both be in jail charged with murder? Now listen, you chefs. I've got an idea, but we can't afford to miss.
just helping her father. Yeah. Ken? Sheriff Wilson. How do you do? Hello, Mr. Allen. Good afternoon, Miss Barbara. How do you and do? And you, Sheriff? We've combed the roads around here, and we've asked the cooperation of the police in the city. But it looks like Matthews and Jackson made a clean getaway. What about Benton? He's behind all this trouble. Benton's too clever for that. He's built his fences carefully. I don't think we're needed here. Let's go out and talk about the weather. That's the best suggestion you've made all afternoon. Hey, we don't need you. No, I'm going now. Excuse me. That's a nice spot. Hello? Thank you. My dear young lady, we have decided that there are a couple of things you should know about this fellow who calls himself Tim Allen. Really? He isn't a telephone man, you know. Oh, and Justin, I was getting interested in him, too. We were afraid something like that might happen. Now, you take Jack or myself. What right? do you boys do? You see, before you, two of the most ambitious, painstaking, hard-working... Polo players that ever held a mallet in their hands. What did you say? I wish you'd use your influence with Tim Dale. What did you say, Dale? Of course. You see, I hate to have you boys being misled. His name isn't Alan, you know. Don't move, any of you. You, Miss Robertson, get up. Turn around and walk through this head. See where you are, Robert. We could just get a line on this fellow, Ben. Must have been his men that rescued Matthews and Jackson. It's pretty hard to do now that we've lost our prisoners. Well, they won't go far, that's certain. That sounded like a shot. Sheriff? All right. Do everything you can. Not a trace of them. I'll pay any ransom they demand. Well, they're not after money. Then what are they to gain? The Benton engineered this deal, as you say. I know he did. How do you know? Because there was a note thrown through my window this afternoon while I was out. I didn't give it to you before because... Well, I hope the Sheriff might have had some clue by this time. We have Barbara where you can find her. If you and Robinson expect to see her again, you will stop the service of the Riverton Telephone Company for one full day, as well as discontinue work on the new line to the San Juan Dam. There's your ransom. Now, if you want me to, I can order the construction crew off that job in an hour. If we stop service in Riverton for one day... You'll place thousands of people in danger. Yet it means barbarous life. How many lives will it mean if you stop service? I don't know what to do. Tim, she's all I have. You love her, too. Then let's give them what they want. The cost of how many lives? You're acting on a supposition. This is a fact. This company operates because it serves all humanity, not a single individual. And that service must not be stopped. Barbara wouldn't have it otherwise. I guess you're right. 
Hello. Get me W.T. Dale of the Consolidated Telephone Company right away. This is his son speaking. Might surprise you to know what my real name is. Barbara found it out the first day you were here. Hello. Hello, Dad. This is Tim. Yes, I'm in Riverton, working for the telephone company, but I need help. I want a construction crew, telephone poles, cables, and trucks. Can you help me out? Good. Can you get the men started right away? Thanks, Dad. Goodbye. Do you mean Consolidated is going to help us? With everything they have. This begins to look like a real fight. And we'll start that fight by putting armed guards around the telephone building to see that that main cable is not cut. Consolidated sent you men here because I asked for you. We've had to pull our own men off the job and put them as guards around this building. Now, we've already strung cable across Devil's Gorge. But we've got ten miles farther to go to San Juan Dam. That ought to be easy. Not going to be easy. We're going to have to fight every step of the way. I promised these people here that you fellas had finished the job. Now it's up to you to do it. Well, Tim, some of us fellas straddle poles with your dad. And I guess we got a few fights left in us for you. Thanks, boy. I knew I could count on you. Yeah, and I'll see you out on the job. Jack, load these fellas. Yeah, Tim. Come on, man. Is that all your stuff? Oh, Bob. Just yeah, Report to me every night. I'll be outside. Okay, Tim. Yeah. Hello, Tim. Oh, good morning, boss. Any news? I sent two truckloads of men out to finish the last band at the dam. I mean about Barbara. No, I'm doing everything I can. If I could only locate Matthews and Jackson. Stay away from that window. Keep an eye on her. If I'd known the way this was going to turn out, I'd never agreed to it. Don't start crawling, Matthews. It's not healthy. There's a murder charge right against you and Jackson. Forget it. When we get hold of that ribbon charter, we'll all have money enough to get out of here. What about the girl? I wouldn't worry about her. Robertson would be glad enough to forget all about it if he gets her back. Safe. I hope you're right. I know I am. Now, yeah, look. Where's the weakest point on that new telephone line of the dam? Along the riverbank at Danford Crossing. The river is rising in this rain, isn't it? Yes. And if it ran over its banks, it would knock down those new telephone poles, wouldn't it? Yes. And that'd cut from the main line in Riverton. That's right. And if we up the river to overflow by using a little dynamite... Yeah, exactly. And this time, no mistakes. Jackson. Yes. You start for Danford Crossing at once. Right. Can you lay your hands on enough dynamite? Leave it to me. All right, get going. That's uh, it. We can plant that down. Uh, right in. I was just up the dam. Everything is fine. Oh, come on, snap out of it. At least you have the satisfaction of knowing that you kept your word. The job was all finished and the power goes on at midnight. I know you're worried about Barbara. I wish there was something we could do besides just sitting here. Well, there's nothing we can do. I don't even know what direction they took when they got away. There's no starting point. Why don't you turn the whole thing over to the authorities? Well, we can't do that. They start pressing them. There's no telling what might happen. This way, at least we know she's safe. Come on, Joe. Jackson! Where'd you find him? Found him slipping around the riverbank down for close. Where's Barbara? I don't know. She's with Benton. He's hiding out. Where? I tell you, I don't know. Now, we're giving you a chance. Talking, you may get a break. You haven't got anything on me. Nothing but murder. We'll let a court decide that. You may never see a court. What do you mean? These men here, they'll do anything I tell them. Am I right? That's right, Tim. Well, in order to keep a jury from being influenced by a clever lawyer, we may settle this thing ourselves. Don't try to throw a scare into me. It won't work. And almost anything could happen in a storm like this. I don't suppose they'd ever find a man if he accidentally fell in the river, would they? You want us to work him over, Tim? Well, it would have to appear as an accident. A bad accident. We'll take care of that. Well, Jackson, what about a parachute? I tell you, I don't know. All right, boys. Come on. Come on, you. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 w
Where's Father? Jackson's been gone three hours. to that fool would be the first time I'll now smart him. Are you sure of that location? Yes, they said the river would break down the telephone line. Then it won't take much to do it either. Tim, that river's been rising a foot an hour. Here, Jack, take this gun. You stay here. Let us have the minute to lose. Come on, put this horn guy. Let's get going. Jack, we'll be back for you later. Take it easy, Mud. Come on, sit down. You got a long time ahead of you.
There's somebody coming. Let's get out of here. Send a special train with sandbags and equipment at once. condition attack. What's that, W.T.? It's about my son, Tim. I... The condition's been removed, John. We'll close the deal tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> 